is asking, do you have any favorite or typical pairs, the energy stocks that you already know to trade correlative, and do you have index pairs that you tend to focus on? Well, the index trades, um, you know, I like the energy stuff, but that's only because I kind of, I, I just, I, I just like the, the, the energy sector. I'm not comfortable. I like to watch crude oil. I like, like to watch, um, you know, the, the, the crude versus the unleaded gasoline future versus the heating oil future. By the same token, the stocks. You know, you can even toss in USO, which is the um, which is the crude oil ETF in that mix. For index products, they're all fair game. I would stick to you know you may want to have some you do, diamonds, DIA, Spider, IWM, and Q's. They all have high correlations. Are all extremely liquid products, which makes them much better for. Uh, you know, um, sort of intermediate style traders who, who, you know, you don't want to start fiddling around with illiquid stuff. I hate the liquid products, and I've been trading for 20 years. Um, I, those that that four right there, I think, is a good place to start. If you want to toss in something like the XLE, the Energy ETF, you could do that. The XLF um, are also decent products. The XLF is the financial ETF. Those are, again, liquid products and, and can, you know, um, you know, I said DIA minus XLF or something like that. Um, those are things you could certainly investigate. Check the correlations. Um, check the time frame. Let's say you thought the XLF after being, th yeah, this is a perfect example. Look at, this, look at the, the, the diamond minus XLF chart. It's been crushed. What's happened? Well, the XLF has gotten whacked. The diamonds have been hurt, but they're still relatively strong compared to the financial sector. The financial sector is getting crushed. Let's say you want to buy the financial sector, but you need a hedge. You're not so convinced that the market isn't going to isn't going to crap out and just head lower. You could sell the diamonds here. Okay. Um, if you thought, well, actually, if you're doing no, 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 that's that's incorrect. If you thought that. The diamonds minus the XLF is going to rally back up. You'd be buying diamonds and selling XLF. Okay, if you thought it was going to get back um, um, down, you'd be buying XLF and selling diamonds. If you thought that was going to reverse itself, if you thought that pair was going to get narrower and narrower. Okay, but here I think um, the diamonds minus XLF, or you can even do spider minus XLF and see what that comes out to be. Let's check out spider minus XLF. And you experiment like this, you know? Yeah, that's come down as well. If you thought that that, that pair was going to rally back up, what would you do? Sell a spider put spread and um, sell an XLF call spread. Or, you know, buy some spiders, buy 100 shares of spiders, sell 100 shares of XLF. Stick that in paper money. See how it works over, over a month's time or something like that. If the pair rallies up, you probably would make money on it. If it keeps going back down, you'll lose money. These these charts are okay, but I, again, my preference is to see things that oscillate a little bit more. This is pairs trading is in essence a, a very uh, a little bit more refined version of contrarian trading, where you say, "Gosh, the market's gotten so whacked, and so just has be been beaten down so much, it's got to bounce back up." or it's been rallying so strong for so long, it's got to come back down at some point. That's contrarian trading. Pairs trading is contrarian as well. Um, if you see something oscillating around back and forth, you say, I think that pair got whacked. I think it's going to bounce back up. Or I think it's getting pushed up too high. I think it's going to go back down. To me, that's a little bit more consistent performance. In other words, it's a little bit more stable, statistically stable, than let's say an individual stock, where you know, gee, it's gotten so, you know, or, or ETFO is getting so pushed back down, it's going to bounce. But we'll guarantee it will, and it might continue lower, might continue higher. I think a pair that's oscillating around a mean, those contrarian bets are a lot more high probability. That's how I like to view these trades. So these, but I would, you know, start with ETFs. Just take a look at it and maybe make a longer term trade on it and see how it works. You know, again, do it in paper money, no cost. And uh, may, you know, you can decide whether it works for you if you find success on paper money.
Tama, we've got uh, two more. What if the pair is in the middle of its range? Is there any way to do a non-directional trade like a straddle or a strangle? Yeah, I if she could. I'm not a big fan of that. I am not. I think there's too much uncertainty about where it goes. And if you're going to straddle and strangle, that's, uh, Matthew, that's for the next webinar. Because that's really getting pretty, pretty advanced as far as the trade. In other words, you're, there you, you're, you're no longer just looking at the pair itself. You're actually looking at the relative volatilities. And that's another degree of difficulty. Okay? That's what I was doing back when I was running a hedge fund. It's, it's hard to do. It's even harder to execute. Um, and that's what you can try to experiment with when the pair is in the middle of the range. But generally speaking, I like to see for this discussion and for the purpose, I like to see them at the ends of their range. In other words, either up above or down below that average price. If they're right in the middle, I'd say, eh, you know, walk away. Another question from Paul. What about oil versus airlines? Sure. I mean, airlines, I would, you know, type in the star USO minus Southwest. You know, uh, USO minus LUV or something. Or, you know, the LUV has been pretty strong. A lot of the other stocks, airline stocks, are just really cheap now. But, um, you know, Southwest has been fairly, fairly strong. Sure, you can look at a pair like that. Use your creativity. You know, I, I, you know, I've got my favorites. I, I don't have the time to, to go through that many possibilities uh, anymore. And you know, if you really want to get get good at this, you get you know big computer programs and sort through all these potential trades. Yeah, you know, USO minus LUV. Um, Pairs trade has rallied up pretty sharply. It got to a high of 104. Now it's trading at about 85. Do you think it's going to rally back up, or do you think it's going to sink back lower? Um, that's a tough call right there. That's a tough call. To me, that's more trade trade in oil. I think the oil just dominates that pair, and I don't see nice oscillation. Um, so, you, I mean, yeah, you know, give it a shot. I think that's going to go bouncing back up to 90 or 95. You're buying oil and selling self. Um but I would check the correlations on that and watch the risk on that trade because I could see that very easily going, you know, five or six points against you pretty quickly. So use caution. I want to thank everybody for joining in today. Thanks for the questions and thank you, Matthew, for setting all this up.